I just found out that Matthew Lewis is coming to Fan Expo. I'm so excited. This Fan Expo, the guest list is so good so far. I'm so excited. And this kind of leads right into the video I want to film because I wanted to film a video about my favorite films. I just couldn't shorten it to like 10 movies. So it's like 13 or 14 movies, I think. Um, and I am going to get right into the list because there's a lot of them. Okay, I have my list of movies in my new bullet journal that is quite awesome. And I'm just going to get into the list. On the same topic of Neville himself coming to Fan Expo, my all-time favorite movies are, of course, Harry Potter. That will never change, as far as I can tell. Um, those movies mean so much to me. The books mean so much to me. I can watch the movies over and over and never get sick of them. In fact, I'm intending on starting a rewatch of the series because I just feel like I haven't watched them um, in ages. When really, the last time I watched them was back in October because I rewatched them uh, leading up to Fantastic Beasts. So I actually have watched them within the past like six months or so, but I still need to watch them again. Um, my favorite is probably three or four. Um, I love Prisoner of Azkaban. I love Alfonso Cuaron. Um, his style of the movie is just beautiful. Um, Goblet of Fire I love as well. Um, it's one of my favorites. There's a trend here. They're all my favorites. My least favorite would be probably Chamber of Secrets or Seven Part Two. Um, I am one of those people who does prefer Seven Part One, which I don't think there are many of them, but I love Deathly Hallows Part One. Deathly Hallows Part Two is mainly a big battle. It is great, but Part One for me, I, I just like it more. Um, I'm not really going to say much more about that. It's Harry Potter. It's my favorite. Um, my next favorite is definitely, it's on par with Harry Potter and it's a new favorite and I never thought I would put a musical as my favorite because I hate musical. Well, okay, I hated musicals, but to be fair, I'd never really watched any of them and now two of them are on the list or three, depending on how you look at it. La La Land. I loved La La Land so much. I've watched it three times. I want to watch it again. I don't have the Blu-ray. I want to get the Blu-ray. I can't explain how much I love La La Land. The, oh, the technical aspect of it. It's such a visually stunning movie. Um, the cinematography is bright and bold and amazing and the production design and the, well not even the production design, the costume design. Um, Everything is so specific and adds to the element of old Hollywood meets modern filmmaking. And it's just, I love the story. I love the ending. I know. I thought it was, I thought the ending was perfect. Um, the, the music has been on repeat on my phone nonstop. I cannot get enough of the music. And I just love the movie. It just made you feel so wonderful and it's just such a big beautiful movie and I loved it. I recently within the past year watched a whole lot of old films um, which I hadn't done before and I love them and it's all because of this film course I took in university um, which was by far my favorite course that I've taken so far. Um, and the first movie we watched was Singing in the Rain. And again, just like La La Land, it's such a beautiful movie. And the best part was at the end of the movie when it finished, um, everyone, the whole class started applauding and everyone just got up. I could hear from around the room people saying how just content and happy they felt after it. and how it just made them feel so good and that was the best part of it. You just watch it and it just makes you happy. It's just such a happy movie and I loved it. This list isn't in any specific order by the way, um, other than Harry Potter made first. Um, I'm just kind of squishing them together into categories. So musicals we'll do now. Um, Level Land, Singing in the Rain, and Beauty and the Beast. 
both versions. When I was younger, Belle was my favorite Disney princess by far, with the books and wanting to travel and she was just such a smart, um, intelligent character. Um, and I've recently rewatched it a few times to prepare for the new Beauty and the Beast and I was able to get so much more out of it now compared to when I was younger, of course. Um, but it still holds up as just such a wonderful movie. And then I watched the live action Beauty and the Beast with Emma Watson. I've seen it twice and I don't know if I... I, I don't know if I like it more than the animated one. I have this... it's like the animated one is so amazing but I love this one. Um, it's probably partially due to Emma Watson. She is my favorite, um, but I just think she did such a fantastic job amplifying the character um, and the aspects of her that made her this strong, intelligent individual. And it was such a stunning movie. There was so much going on in terms of production design. The sets were stunning. The costumes were amazing. Um, the Beast actually was done extremely well. I was very impressed with that. It brought a whole new level to the movie that wasn't there in the animated one, and it was just, it was fantastic. Another favorite movie of mine is Midnight in Paris. This is also a fairly recent watch of mine, within the last year, um, and I loved it. I loved the nostalgia aspect of it, and of course the time travel. Time travel is my favorite. Um, and it's just such a beautiful movie. It's got this kind of flow to it and it just kind of takes you along in the story and it's beautiful. It just makes me happy and I could watch it over and over and it's hilarious as well. Um, and I very much relate to the idea of wanting to live in the past. Um, I love, I love that and I love the way the movie tackles it and it's just, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> Switching it up a bit, Star Wars. I love sci-fi. It's just, I love sci-fi. Um, Star Wars was fantastic. Was. Star Wars is amazing. Um, the original trilogy is fantastic. Um, the prequels are, uh, they're okay. I like watching them because Star Wars, but they're not my favorite. But the original trilogy is what I'm talking about. I love the original trilogy and The Force Awakens. I love The Force Awakens. I don't care. It was amazing. Um, fun fact, it was also the very first movie I ever cried in. I was sobbing when, spoiler, Han died. It just, it was so sad. I don't know what came over me. I, it's never happened before. I had tears streaming down my face, but the movie was amazing. I'm really sorry for the sudden change. Um, I was filming and then I had to stop and I've only been able to get back to it today, different day. But I will continue the video. Now taking a completely different turn, um, Hoffa's. This is part of the Cornetta trilogy um, by Edgar Wright and it's one of the three with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. This one specifically is like a cop comedy and it's so funny. It's probably the least weird out of the three because the other two um, are just ridiculous. Like, if you haven't seen them, watch them without knowing what's gonna- like, don't look up anything before you watch them. It, it makes it so much better. Um, the other two are Shaun of the Dead, which came before Hot Fuzz, and then the last one is The World's End. Um, that one I went into not knowing a thing about it, and it was the strangest thing ever. Um, once you reach a certain scene, but it was quite hilarious. Um, but my favorite is Hot Fuzz. I've watched it quite a few times and it just it's just as funny each time. Um, and it's just ridiculous. It's it's British humor, it's like all of these great British actors in one movie, um, in this ridiculous movie, and it's just hilarious. Definitely recommend watching it. Again, in like the realm of kind of strange comedy is Hunt for the Wilder People. This is a new movie it came out within the last year. Um, and it's by Taika Waititi, who is doing the new Thor movie. Um, so I'm actually very excited for Thor because of the director. Um, 
I've also watched What We Do in the Shadows, which is the other movie that he has made, um, which is also hilarious. Um, that one is maybe a specific kind of humor. Like, it's kind of... you might not like it, but I, I thought it was very, very, very funny. Um, I'm not actually sure which one I like more, but Hunt for the Wilder People is just hilarious. It's the New Zealand comedy. The accents make it so much better than it would have been otherwise, and I think way too underrated. I haven't heard too many people talk about it this year, and there should have been so much more buzz about it. Honestly, it was so good. Now, the next one, I know this is kind of like, some people liked it, some people didn't as much, but Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, specifically. Um, I watched that one before I saw the rest of the series, and it was probably one of the first kind of action movies that I've that I had watched, and I really loved it. It got me into the genre, so I thought it was such a cool movie, and it's just kind of stuck as my favorite of the series, um, even though I know a lot of people like some of the other ones more. Sorry for the dogs, by the way. Now, recently, I watched Rear Window, which I watched it for my film class, and it's like a mystery, almost thriller-type movie by Alfred Hitchcock. Um, and it's such an awesome movie. I, I definitely recommend watching it. It's, um, it keeps you on the edge of your seat the whole time. It's just fantastic. Recently, I've been getting into anime movies, and I've started with Studio Ghibli. I really hope that's how you say it. And um, my favorite that I've seen so far, I've watched a couple of them, but I think my favorite so far has been Howl's Moving Castle. Um, I just thought it was such an amazing kind of action fantasy story. Um, and it just drew me in the whole time, and it was such a beautiful movie. Um, I really, really loved it. Um, I did see um, a few others, and I've loved them all, but so far this has been my favorite. Um, and also, I just saw another anime movie called Your Name, um, and that was amazing. Um, it was... it's about these two people one who lives in Tokyo and one who lives in a small town who randomly start switching bodies and then it gets into some weird timeline stuff but it was so fantastic it was a really really great movie um, and it wasn't catered towards kids so many animated movies that I've seen nowadays are catered towards kids um, and there's not that much wrong with that but it does bother me sometimes and this completely did not do that. It was amazing. I definitely recommend checking it out. Okay, another one is Inception. I just love Inception. Um, I've seen it so many times and there's just nothing that I don't like about it. Um, it's such an intriguing movie and it's... <laughs> and I'm sure so many of you have seen it by now, but it's just one of my favorite movies. And lastly, I would have to say Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Um, it's a weird movie. It's Monty Python. Monty Python is the best. Um, I love all of Monty Python's sketches and I love John Cleese because Faulty Towers is one of my favorite TV shows, but that's for a different video. Um, but that movie is just hilarious. It's so absolutely ridiculous and random, but it's so funny, um, and it just, it just I like watching it. Um, that's all on the list of my favorite movies. I probably skipped some, um, but I tried to keep it as short as I could. I couldn't keep it to ten movies, so I went a bit over. But I hope you enjoyed the list. I would love to hear what your favorite movies are, if you've seen any of these, or if you like them or not. Um, and. I just love talking about films, so I would love to start talking about them more on this channel. I'll probably do some movie reviews as well, um, which I do on my blog, I just haven't done on the channel yet. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time. Bye!